All right, so I want to walk you guys through some numbers to give you some context on um, GDP. So here's a time series graph, which you know has time down here, and then it has total GDP, US GDP on the Y axis. So this is about 20 years or so. Back in around 1998, we had roughly about $9 trillion in US total GDP. Um, the gray is where there was a couple recessions, 2001, September 11th, and 2008, 2009, the housing crisis. Um, again, about 10 years ago during the housing crisis, we we're a little over $14 trillion. So today we've climbed up to, in 2020, around um, $22 trillion. So the U.S. economy has been doing very, very well. Obviously, we might be hitting a recession in 2020 with the coronavirus, et cetera. So over here is um, US GDP is roughly about 20, um, 20, 21, $22 trillion in again, 2020. Everyone thinks that China is a bigger economy or really um, uh, going to overtake the United States. Um, someday that's definitely possible, but the Chinese or China economy is worth, worth about $13 trillion. So they're almost still half the size of the U.S. economy, yet they still have over a billion people. They have three times the amount of people than the United States. Japan is the third largest co country on the planet at, at roughly $5 trillion. Germany at $4 trillion. Uh, United Kingdom roughly $3 trillion. India, another country that has a lot of people. Um, only has a total, it's the seventh largest on the planet, but only has about $2.7 trillion in, in economic, um, total economic activity. So the U.S., by being, I was born in the United States, if you were born in the United States or if you're living in the United States, we're very fortunate to be in the U.S. as far as economic opportunity. The United States, if you divide the total global economy, is worth $92 trillion. So if you divide 20 into that 92, you're going to get roughly 23% to 25% of world GDP. So the U.S. only has 5% of the world's population, yet we have about 25% of the world's wealth, all right? Um, so almost a quarter of the wealth is, it resides in the United States. And we're very fortunate that the U.S. economy is extremely strong. So of that $20 trillion, um, to, to get an apples to apples comparison, you have to do what's called per capita. So you take all the people in the US, 300 million, and you divide it by that, that $20 trillion. If you do that, we would have about $60,000 per person in the United States. Excuse me. So, so basically, if you divided up all the wealth equally in the US, you'd have about $60,000 per person. Now, the reason the U.S. is so successful, again, is because we're a free market capitalistic system. So some people have a lot more than $60,000. Jeff Bezos has over a billion, and some people are very poor, but that's based on the economic system, and that's politically how we balance rewarding people and inequality and all those things. So the U.S. is um, very strong. Again, we have about 60000 per capita. Singapore is another country, actually, that's successful on a per capita basis germany's at 52 and then you see the chinese are at roughly sixteen thousand dollars so there's a lot of people that in in china that are very poor in india another country again they're at around seven thousand and then ethiopia only has about two thousand dollars so we have sixty thousand per person they only have two thousand so a lot of poverty and we'll probably discuss how that impacts the quality of life remember at the beginning of this chapter we talked about being happy and whether money matters well yeah, where would you rather live? Would you rather live in the United States or would you rather live in Ethiopia? So I'm going to start hinting towards why GDP is important. Even the, the richest person in Ethiopia is living worse than a lot of the, the poverty in America. Some of the poorest people in America are living actually very well compared to a lot of other people in the world. So we're, we are going to make an argument that GDP is really important for quality quality of life. So over here we have um, uh, the breakdown of GDP. So remember the, the, the equation for GDP is consumption plus investment plus government plus net exports. So $14 trillion is consumption, all right? So that's why, unfortunately, we're a consumer-based economy because uh, literally 14 of our $20 trillion is all consumption. So about 70% of the United States GDP is consumption, us going out and spending money on goods and services and all that stuff. 
So um, it is really important for our GDP and it does employ people and it is a, the vast, again, 70% of our, our economy is based on consumption. Um, investments about 3 trillion or a little under 4 trillion. Government spending, so the government is about 3 trillion of our entire economy. And net exports is negative. The reason it's negative is because we import more than we export. All right, so now I want to walk you through four examples. And this is where you guys are going to do your GDP March Madness bracket. And we're going to see who's going to win um, our bracket. So here's the first example. Here's an, These are economic events. And then you have to tell me, does it impact GDP? Which component and how much? So Debbie spends $200 to buy her husband dinner at the finest restaurant in Boston. Does that impact GDP? So if you want, you can write this on a piece of paper, see if you get it right. You can pause it if you like. So yes, it is a part of GDP. Um, Debbie is a household or a consumer, so it would be $200 towards consumption. And you might be able to see that down here at the bottom. That's a service. All right, next one, Sarah spends $1,800 on a new laptop uh, to use in her publishing business. The laptop was built in China. So if you recall, something that's built in another country doesn't technically count because it was built in another country. But Sarah, you're kind of reading into this, that Sarah actually bought this laptop at, say, Best Buy and used it for her business. So technically this doesn't count, but let's look at the uh, accounting of this. So here's the answer down here. Sarah spends that um, that $1,800. Now, $1,800 is positive for investment. So um, it's going to count on a positive uh, $1,800 for investment. But the net exports is going to be negative $1,800. So as it comes into the country, it's negative $1,800. And as she buys it for her business, it's positive $1,800. But they both cancel each other out. Okay, so on the net effect would be zero in that case. All right, C, Jane spends $1,200 on a computer to use in her editing business. She got last year's model on sale for a great price from a local manufacturer. So if you recall, remember the qualifying criteria that we went over, anything that's used or uh, a model from a previous year does not count. So the fact that she bought that counted for last year doesn't count for this year. So C does not count towards GDP because, GDP because it's a, a last year's model. It's a used model. All right, the last one's a little bit tricky. General Motors builds $500 million worth of cars, but consumers only buy $470 million. All right, excuse me. This, this over here is the PowerPoint. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through the PowerPoint and the textbook and these examples. Now, I didn't quite cover this entire General Motors thing. So basically, at their power, at their plant, they they made five hundred million dollars worth of cars. They sent it to the car lot, and the car lot only sold four hundred seventy million. So the four hundred seventy million that was sold during that quarter or that year, that counts towards GDP as consumption, as you can see down here, four hundred seventy million for consumption. Now they still have thirty million dollars sitting on the car lot. So what do they do with that? Well, economists want to count that entire 30 million as well, even though it hasn't been sold yet. So they're going to count that 30 million as GDP, and it's going to um, be called investment inventory. So the entire 500 million dollars would count towards GDP. And here's the answers over here. So let me give you some clarifications here. So the investment that, that for B that I was going over, this was actually built in China. So let's say. China exports this to the United States. Now that $800 that they would actually built this computer, that counts towards China's um, GDP positively. Now that gets on a boat and it comes to um, the United States and Best Buy, Best Buy is going to sell that computer. So they import it, say they import that into the United States, that's a negative $800 being imported into the United States. right? And then let's say they sell that computer for $800, right? So if they sell for 800, we have a negative 800, the net impact is zero. Now, is that really gonna happen? Is Best Buy going to make it in China for 800 and then sell for 800? No, what are they going to do? They're gonna mark up the price. So let's say they sell the computer for $1,800. Then that $800 would be produced in China. That would be 800 positive for China's economy. It comes into the United States at 800. 
but then they sell it for 1800 so the U.S. would have consumption of 1800 They'd have an import negative of 800 and GDP would be positively impacted by $1,000. So it's a, a misconception that some people think that when we produce something in China, it doesn't help our economy. When it does come into the United States, it's obviously a negative, but it's also sold or marked up at a higher price to a consumer and Best Buy in this case, they're obviously making money on that. So it does in aggregate help our GDP. All right, and like, like I said over here, if um, just to clarify the E problem with General Motors, in 2020, let's say they, they produced these 500 million cars. Well, they that counts as 2020 GDP for $500 million. But let's say in 2021, all those 30 million cars that are sitting on the car lot they're going to sell them in 2021. So what are they going to do? All they're going to do, those of you that have accounting, they're going to basically credit and debit these, these accounts to, um, to equal that out. So they would sell the $30 million over here for consumption, and then they would take a negative $30 million out of that investment inventory, and then it would be zero towards GDP. But the accountants, the GDP accounts are going to um, go ahead and, and do that. Again, there's actually some GDP account that does does all this um, accounting work for us, right? So hopefully that made sense. I know it's a, a little bit complicated, but um, I just wanted to clarify some of these scenarios. Next up, we are going to start our GDP bracket. Um, you're going to be able to answer a bunch of economic events, and you're going to be able to see whether it impacts GDP, which component, and some of the accounting also I will ask you, all right? So good luck. We're going to um, crown a GDP market madness um, champion at the end of this chapter.